Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the Other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. Today, if you have your Bibles ready, we'll be in the book of Genesis chapter 4, verses 11 through 26. The title of this sermon is, The Way of Cain and God's Response. Here's the first half of this two-part study. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel? Your brother, he said, I do not, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? So one of the things that we see is, is, and I, I wanted to make sure we get this because we were running out of time last time when we looked at it, is when we look at, at verse nine, we continue to see the hardened heart of Cain. He lies to God. So he lies to God right off the bat. He lies, and then he throws a rhetorical question at God. Uh, and, and so Cain is, is, is the same Cain that tried to create worship the way that he wanted to worship. Uh, there had to be a blood sacrifice, but he didn't want to do that. It's the same Cain that was dealing with the anger that he had because his brother's offering was accepted. It's the same Cain that has killed his brother and now the Cain that lies to God. And, and let me tell you something. A rhetorical question is not what you want to throw at God. That's not going to end well. Okay, <laughs> it's okay to ask questions, but don't throw something out rhetorical to him because, I mean, at the end of the day, he's God. And, and I, one of the things I was trying to get y'all to see is the mercy and the, the grace that God has given to Cain. And we're going to see that even as we go through the scripture tonight. That God continues to give mercy and shows it to Cain. And, and and, and what we also see is the sadness of what sin does. Something that started off as one sin has spiraled into bigger and bigger sin. And, and we can see that uh, in the scriptures. Warren Worsby said this. He said, the more you think about Cain's sin, the more heinous it becomes. The murder wasn't motivated by sudden passion. It was carefully premeditated. Cain didn't kill a stranger in defense. He murdered his own brother out of envy and hatred. Furthermore, Cain did not uh, did it after being at the altar to worship God in spite of God's warning and promise. And finally, once the horrible deed had, was done, Cain took it very lightly and tried to lie his way out of it. Numbers chapter 32, verse 23 says, But if you do not do so, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord. And be sure sin will find you out. We need to understand, like, when we see somebody who's in sin, I, I, the guy that's from my state, South Carolina, the guy that was on trial, Murdoch, I'm sure the first time he took money from somebody, there was already other sin that had already been happening. And the lies just continue to keep coming. And then eventually murder happens. And that's what sin does. When you start off with pornography, You never think that you're going to end up in jail for child pornography. It happens because sin takes a hold of you and it wants more and more of you. And and sadly, what we know is that that people will choose to to follow lawlessness. Even even though they know who God is and they know they know the Jesus of the Bible, they will choose lawlessness. In Romans chapter 6, verse 19, it says, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uh, uncleanliness and of, of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so present your members as slaves 
of righteousness for holiness. Verse 10, it says, And he said, What have you done? This is God speaking. The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. The same ground that, that Cain tilled. The same ground. And we see in verse 11, it says, So now you are cursed from the earth. God's judgment. And God's judgment has come. People think they can get away with their sin. That they can get away with their behavior. And then eventually God's judgment will come. Now we know that in Scripture this is not the first curse that was given. And Adam and Eve were not cursed. But Satan was the first one cursed. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 16 through 19. And then we also know that, that God cursed the ground. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. See our culture doesn't want to hear about this God. The culture wants to hear about the God who's loving and long-suffering. But we have a God that judges. And it's very important for us to understand that, that, that God is showing mercy to Cain. But eventually judgment comes. The heart was hardened. That's why we talk about the way of Cain. It's the broad path. The way of Cain is sin. And it eventually leads to more and more sin to your Morally, insanity is what happens. Your, your, your moral, uh, the way that we look at our morals is completely out of whack because our sin has blinded us to what we're supposed to be doing, what is right and what is wrong. We learn that, that the only way to God is, is through a blood sacrifice. And, and, and so even as we look at that, as we talk about sin, God, even at that moment with Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, and he says, And also Adam and his wife, the Lord God, made tunics of skin and clothed them. So there had to be a sacrifice in that moment. But Jesus has paid the price for the sin for us. And it's through death on the cross, it's God's perfect sacrifice and his, his resurrection that we can be forgiven of our sins. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18-21, through 21, it says, For you know that, is, uh, that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from uh, the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believed in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. We know that the wages of sin is death in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. And, and the reality of it is, is that, that we have the free gift of eternal life. But you have to choose to follow Christ. You have to repent. It tells us in scripture in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Sin is death. In Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, it says, As I live, declares the Lord God, the proverb shall no, uh, shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father as well as the soul of the Son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. So we see the evidence of sin and, and, and the evidence of the sin of the blood-stained ground from the brother that was killed. And we, we look at Genesis, and it's very important that God has included this in the Bible for us because He does judge sin. Now, He's given us, we live in the age of grace. And yet people still want to choose lawlessness. He says in verse 12, he says, When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. But he judged him. And verse, let me go back to verse 11, make sure I get the rest of that. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. And so now we know uh, that the earth has been cursed, the same land that uh, the ground that, that, uh, that Cain worked. And then it says, When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. He's like, you took great pride in what you could produce from the land and no more. No more. 
You came to me with, with your worship of what came from the earth, which you were so proud of, and it was the wrong worship. But now you won't produce anything. You'll be a wanderer. You'll be homeless. You'll be a fugitive. No matter what you try to seek to find satisfa satisfaction, you'll spend your life in loneliness and emptiness, restless, the rest of the days of your life. And that is a picture for us for sin. When you're in sin, you're in an empty place. You're in a lonely place. You're in a dark place. But you have the answer in Christ. But what keeps us from going to that? Pride. It's the same pride that Cain had. It's the same pride that Cain's still dealing with. You know, when we look at this and we talk about the area that this is in, this is a real place because we know that we had the, the Tigris in the Euphrates rivers. And when he's driven out, modern-day Iraq, the desert, don't nothing grow there. I've been there. It don't grow. To this day, you're not growing anything there. It's plagued with natural disasters and famine. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11, it says, Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonishment upon whom the end of the ages have come. When we look at these scriptures, you, you want to understand that God has given us these scriptures, these, these things that were written as examples for admonishment. So that way you can learn from them. Not to do this. That's, that's the whole point, is, is to understand, like, you, there's a lesson here through Cain. Don't be like Cain. You know, the, the, the one thing I remember is, is my dad would say is the experience is the best teacher. Any of y'all ever heard that one before? Experience is the best teacher. And, and what we realize is how good the Lord is to, to let his people learn, and you can get the lesson from it without you having to go through it. Like he's telling you, it's, it's right here. It's in the Word of God. Don't be like the way of Cain. Don't go down that road. Don't allow pride to take you further than you need to go. Or envy. Or anger. Or strife. It's like you can learn from this. They're there to admonish you. They're there to, to, to have you go, you know what? I remember reading this in the, in the Bible. and I'm, I'm about to step in something I don't need to step into. And, and it was written for us to learn. It's written for us to guide our lives. That's why Paul wrote that in 1 Corinthians 10, 11. He, he's like, hey, these are examples for you. These are examples for you as we pour over Scripture. Like, so you have an example not to go down that road. But look at Cain's, Cain's heart in verse 13. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. My punishment is greater than I can bear. This is not fair. It's not fair. And, and, and Cain is filled with self-pity and fear. And yet he's wanting some kind of treatment better than his brother got. In Proverbs 19.3 it says, The foolish of man twists his ways and his heart frets against the Lord. Cain is twisted up. You have to understand if you sow into wickedness, you are not going to reap peace. People don't get that. For some reason, when they give their heart to Christ, they think because all these years, well, I gave my heart to Christ, I've been forgiven, but they don't realize that what you've sown into, you may still reap while you're walking with God. For instance, jail. You did something where you were supposed to go to jail, and you gave your heart to Christ. You still have to finish your time out. you sown into that, that, that thing that put you there, and you have to finish your time out. There, there are, we reap what we sow. And we can't think that because we, we, we sow into sin that we're going to have peace. You're not going to. In Isaiah 48, 22, it says, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. They have no peace. Cain has no peace. And you'll have no peace, too, if you're sowing into sin, if you're stuck in sin. Too many people don't want to be judged. They think they're being judged unfairly today. Well, you can't judge me. You just did something wrong. You need to be judged. You need to be corrected. You're doing a disservice to your children if you'd let them just get away with whatever they want. That's the problem we have in America today. There needs to be a penalty. And, and, and Cain's like, man, you need to give me a lenient penalty, God. But God is still going to judge. 
We need to remember that, that God is, is still the same yesterday, today, forever. That's in Hebrews 13.8. We read this and we go, well, man, God doesn't judge that way anymore. Have you read the story of Ananias and Sapphira? Right? They lied to the Holy Spirit. They both, boom, they're gone. Judged. And, and, and if you read the, the last part of that verse, in, in, in Acts, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 5, Verse 11 is this, so great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. They're like, oh, wait a minute. God still, he's doing that still? Like, you don't think that God won't take you home? You want to act up? You're supposed to be his child? Like, he won't just, uh-uh. He ain't having it. Now, he's long-suffering. And I think what the problem is, is, is our nation, we need to look at it this way, is Cain deserved what was coming which was justice but god gives mercy and and, and what well, we have to remember that it's god that judges and vengeance is his it's not ours if we think as a nation that god won't judge us as a nation we're wrong because when i look at sodom and gomorrah right and i look at our nation we're 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 in a lot of trouble if you read Ezekiel 16, verses 49 and 50, it says, Look, this, uh, this was the iniquity of, of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter had pride, full, fullness of food, and abundance of idleness. Neither did she see strength in the hand of the poor and needy. And they were haughty and committed abomination before me. Therefore, I took them away as I saw fit. Now, we also know in Sodom and Gomorrah there was a clear... Uh, problem with homosexuality and that's covered in Genesis and we, we know that because it's 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 covered there um, as as they want to take and get to know the men the angels that come in as they try to break into the door of Lot but did you catch the rest of that they had fullness of food they had an abundance of idleness they had pride but they didn't they did nothing for the poor and the needy those that were in need of help. They were haughty. They were committed to abomination before God. I want you to make sure you get this. If we live in a nation that kills 62 million babies, 62 million. And in 2013, there were more babies aborted, black babies that were aborted in New York City than were born. There were only 29, there were 29,000 and seven terminated pregnancies through abortion. And only 24,108 babies were born. We killed more kids than that were born into this world. But we don't think we're going to pay a price for that. We've allowed same-sex marriage. We see a younger generation now that's open to open relationships and open marriages. We see uh, 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 recently as, we, uh, as we've seen sexually charged trans Gender shows that our, co our kids are being sent to. Whether it's through the library. Or pornographic trans shows that are done in an actual strip club. And kids are being brought in. We have a porn industry which makes about $1.1 billion a year. And roughly 40 million Americans are hooked on it. But that's just the start of it. So what's the leading cause of, of death? Car accidents? Guns? Breast cancer, overdoses. You know why we have a problem with the cartels in our nation? It's because we're addicted to drugs as a nation. As a nation. When I look at these things, and I think to myself, and, and that's not even included in the transgender stuff, where we're actually in elementary school telling kids, hey, don't tell your parents, but you can now be, you're a boy, but now you're going to be a girl. And we'll help you with all of that. And they're giving medications to these kids. They don't even know how it's going to affect them. They're being experimented on. And you want to depopulate the world? Start castrating kids. Because that's what is, what's happening. And so when I look at all this, and I look at the satanic worship that happened at the Grammys, and the fact that we're having a Satan con in Boston, and it's sold out, and you don't think that we're not like Sodom and Gomorrah? We're worse. Judgment's coming. If it's not already here, God is, is long-suffering. 
and showing mercy to this nation, but we have to turn back as a nation. Cain wouldn't do it. And how arrogant would we be not to confess our sins as a nation? And you go, well, I haven't aborted nobody. I haven't done any of this stuff. As a nation, I look at Nehemiah. What did Nehemiah do? I repent for our, my sins and my nation's sins. That's how we should pray. In Proverbs 28, verse 5, it says, Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand it completely. We have a lot of evil men and women involved in our government, involved in our federal level of government. We have a lot of evil men and women involved in different areas of our world. And they're allowing these things to happen, and they're pushing for these things, and Satan's using them. As a church, we have to stand up. I told you all about that. that so, I mean, for me, I, I have no problem preaching that. Because I look at what this says, and I go, that goes against God's word. And if we don't start standing up and saying that, we have to. We have to. I don't know what kind of world my grandchildren are, are, are getting. But I want to try to do my best to make sure it's a godly one. We don't need to be like Cain. Yes, we have evil men, but we have some great godly men and women that are standing up. We have evil men, whether it's in politicians or evil men, whether it's... I mean, we have people that won't even... We have judges that won't even adhere to the law. It's evil. We, I, I, I mean, it's just plain evil. I didn't... I, you know, when we bring a, a judge on, it's not to be an activist. It's to... to this is what the law says. There's no bias in the law. The law is based on this. This country is based on this. And when we lose this, this country will fall fast. And we see how quickly it's fallen within a three-year period. We need to be praying for revival. We need to be teaching our kids the foundational things of God. I don't want to see your child or my child or my grandkids end up like Cain. Where they're over there going, well, why are you judging me, God? That's too harsh. You're triggering me. That's silly. You know, it's, it's, you know, now we're hiding behind the thing of well-being. We had an NBA star going to put up a gun and, and, and had those cops and all that stuff happen with the shooting and stuff. And then all he's going to, oh, I got to take, I'm going to take a step, step back because of my well-being. No, you're in trouble. Your pride got you to that point. What you need to do is humbly apologize and deal with your stuff. But nobody's taught them that. But Cain keeps complaining. In verse 14 it says, Behold, you have driven me today away from the ground. From your face I shall be hidden. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. He's concerned about his well-being, and he wasn't concerned about his brother's well-being. Like, I don't want anybody to kill me, but I killed my brother. He's like, don't, don't, don't cast me out, because... When he's talking about being driven away, he's talking about being cast out, to be divorced, to be severed. Because God is a holy God and he can't be with sin. It's that simple. Why do you have to have forgiveness of sin? Because God is a holy God and he can't be in the presence of sin. And we have the blood of Christ. That's why we confess our sins and we repent of our sins and we're covered by the blood of Christ. So when God sees you he sees his son but he doesn't want to be cast out his eyes because God is a holy God in Habakkuk chapter 1 verses 13 through 15 it says you you who are purer eyes than to see evil and cannot look at wrong why do you idly look at traitors and remain silent when the wicked swallows up the man more righteous than he you make mankind like the fish of the sea like crawling things that they have no ruler he brings all of them up with the hook. He drags them out with his net. He gathers them in his dragnet, so he rejoices and he is glad. God's going to deal with it. It may not be in our time, but God will deal with it. You think somebody's getting away with something, but God will deal with it. In verse 14, as we look at the rest of that, it says, I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Whoever finds me will kill me. Sadly, as he's going to be cast away and be a wanderer, going to be homeless, Cain has, has had this huge divide that's happened because of Cain's sin. 
This is Cain's fault. He's being pushed away from the presence of God. Now see, we live in the age of grace. And all you have to do is confess your sins and turn back to God. You have to repent. And I've told y'all this before, there's enough grace for the journey. You need to remember that. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 